Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about the fundamental forces of nature. There happen to be four of those. The four are the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and the gravitational force. Now most of us are familiar with the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force and probably less familiar with the strong force and the weak force. Now why are we looking at these four forces of nature? Well, to understand matter and particle physics, we have to understand why and how they interact and how and why they interact is driven by the natural forces of nature and there's four of them. So understanding these forces helps us in understanding the particles and that's basically what drove a lot of the scientists to figure out how these particles behave and therefore what these particles must be and then figured out how they must go look for the particles based upon how they interact based upon these forces. So let's go to the ones that we're familiar with. The electromagnetic force. The strength of that force relative to the strong force, if we call the strong force strength equal to 1, you can see that the electromagnetic force is less than 1% the strength of the nuclear strong force. Now, that said, it is still a very powerful force. It is the force between charges. So we have positive charges, they repel each other. We have negative charges, they attract each other. And that force is called electromagnetic force. The range is infinite. You can take any two charged particles, move them infinitely far apart from one another, and there's still been interaction. Of course, that infinity, that's so far away, that no longer counts. So when we talk about infinite, we're saying you can go very far away, and there's still interaction. There's still force between them. The force between them is 1 over the distance squared, of course, and it does drop off to very small amounts. So that is the electromagnetic force. The gravitational force is the reason why we're stuck on the planet Earth. If there was no such thing as gravitational force, stars would never form, plants would never form, and we couldn't walk on the Earth, we'd simply float off into space. So the gravitational force is what keeps matter together at a very large scale. Because what I wrote here is that it does not affect nuclear particles. At the particle, the small nuclei-sized particles, there's no real gravitational effect. It's there, but it's so small we can ignore it. So it's negligible. So you can, for all intents and purposes, say that gravity does not have effect on nuclear physics, on small physics. It has an infinite range, just like the electromagnetic force, and the strength is extremely weak. Just look at that. 1 over 10 to the 43rd, the strength of the nuclear strong force. It's very, very weak, so therefore it does not affect small particles, but on a grand scale, when we talk about planets and moons and stars, there's, of course, a lot of force between them, keeping the universe intact. The strong force, which is the strongest of the four forces, also known as the nuclear strong force, has a strength equal to one, more than 100 times as strong as the electromagnetic force. So it's the only, the only force capable of keeping the nucleus of an atom together against the repulsive force of the positive charges of the protons in the nucleus. It has a very short range. Part of the reason why very large nuclei will decay and will break up and uh, because the nuclear strong force can barely keep the strong, the, the large nuclei together, so there's a very delicate balance between the repulsive forces of the protons in large nuclei and the ability of the strong force to keep the nucleus together. Because the range of the strong force is roughly only about the size of the diameter of a single nucleon, a single proton or neutron. Very short range, but it is responsible for keeping the nuclei and the quarks together. Now, we haven't talked about the quarks yet, that comes in a later video, but it's the fundamental force that keeps matter, matter together, such as quarks, into nucleons and the nuclei of the atoms. And finally, we have the weak force, and the weak force is very much weaker than the nuclear strong force, only about one, mil one, one millionth the strength of the, the, uh, the strong force. It has, just like the strong force, a very short range, and it accounts for the decay of particles. As we will learn as we go on and study all the various particles in particle physics, we will know that the vast majority of them are not very stable. They tend to break up. And the interaction, the way these particles break up, have a lot to do with how the weak force works and how the weak force interaction causes these particles to break up. And we'll get into that as we go, um, as we go on and start looking at the details of all these. So at least it gives you kind of a nice little overview and we'll look at each one of these in a little bit more detail before we start discovering more and more particles. And of course, we're not doing the discovering, we're simply following the path of the giants before us that went and did all the heavy work to discover how matter 
fills the universe and how nuclear particles are interacting with each other at that scale. So if you're interested, stay tuned. There's a lot of neat stuff coming up.